Welcome to my lecture online. Now here we're going to do the exact same problem. With one big difference, we're going to use metric units instead of imperial units. And you'll see it really is no different. So let's go ahead and prove that that's really the case. So here again, we're trying to find the power as a function of time. We're given that the car is accelerating up the hill. We're given that the friction force is 1200 newtons, the angle is 30 degrees, the initial velocity 10 meters per second, and the mass of the car is 1500 kilograms. How much power is required to accelerate the car up the hill under those conditions? So we can say here that the power required, well, first we can start with the work. The work required to drive the car up the hill is equal to the force required to gain height times the velocity plus the force required to accelerate times, oh, not times velocity, it's times distance. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. So it's the force gained times the distance, force times distance is work, plus the force required to accelerate times distance plus the friction force times distance. So that's the equation we need to calculate the work required to drive the car up the hill. But then in order to find the power, we divide everything by time, and that's when the distance divided by time becomes velocity, which means the power required as a function of time is equal to the force required to gain the height times velocity plus the force required to accelerate times velocity plus the force required to overcome friction times velocity. And of course, we're going to factor out velocity, but again, we realize that to find velocity, we need to write in terms of distance uh, or initial velocity and acceleration. So we know that velocity is going to be equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So that means the velocity as a function of time is equal to 5 plus, oh, not 5, the initial velocity is 10, 10 meters per second plus 5 times t. That's your velocity. And what about the force to accelerate? We know that F equals ma. And so in this case, the mass is 1500 and acceleration is equal to 5 meters per second. So the force is 7,500 newtons. All right. Um, let's go ahead and plug that in. So the power as a function of time is equal to force to gain height, which is the force to overcome this component of gravity is mg times the sine of theta times velocity, well, we'll do that later, okay, plus the force to overcome acceleration, which is 7,500 newtons, and plus the force to overcome friction, which is 1,200 newtons, and the whole thing multiplied times v, now v is going to be 10 plus 5t, like that. Okay, now we need to know what mg sine theta is. So the power as a function of time is equal to the mass, 1500, times g, which is 9.8, times the sine of 30, which is 1 half, plus 7500 plus 1200 is 8700, multiplied times 10 plus 5t, like that. So with a calculator, we get 1500 times 9.8 times 0.5. That gives us something that's not correct here. Let me try that again. 1500 times 9.8 times 0.5 equals 7350. All right. So continuing over here, we say that power as a function of time is equal to 7350 plus 8700 multiply times velocity, which is 10 plus 5t. Or finally, power as a function of time is equal to adding that together. That gives us 16,050 times 10 plus 5t. What about the units? Well, this is force, and that is velocity. Force is newtons, so the units are newtons and velocity are meters per second and newtons times meters is joules so this is equal to joules per second and of course joules per second is equal to watts 
So again, it doesn't matter what units you use, the problem is essentially worked out exactly the same, and in the end you'll end up with the units you need according to the units you started with. In this case, these are the metric units, and that is how it's done.